Hey, it's Jack. This video is called the number one most powerful thing you can do if you've been ghosted. Hey, I'm Jack Butler. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, you haven't yet subscribed, I want to invite you to subscribe. Just hit the bell notification as well so you hear of new videos as soon as they come out. And also, if you haven't, I want to invite you to download my free checklist. It's called the He's Your Guy Checklist. It'll be the first link beneath this video. It's completely free. It's nine steps that you can run any guy through to let you know, does he have any potential? Is he going to invest in a relationship with you? So let's get on to today's topic. I want to start off by saying if you have been ghosted historically or recently, like, sorry, I know it can be really, really rough. Uh, I know it can involve confusion and heartache and questioning yourself and maybe some anger, lots of things, emotions can run high. So hang in there, I think I've got something that might be able to help you. So I'm gonna get right to it. The most important thing that you can do if you've been ghosted is to take your power back. Take your power back. And what I mean by this is getting very soberly in the reality that a guy who ghosts you is not gonna be your guy. A guy who ghosts you, right? By ghosting, I mean he's dropped off the map. You haven't heard from him in days, weeks, or more. And there was no communication about that. You were kind of going along in a certain trajectory, and now you've heard nothing, right? So if that happens, that is not a way to say, hey, I want to be in a relationship with you, right? Sometimes there are difficult things that come up. Sometimes, you know someone's family member is suddenly really ill and they have to kind of drop everything and go and take care of them. They can still send you a message and let you know what's going on, right? So absent that message, we've got to get clear this is not someone for you to be in relationship with. And that realization, being firmly grounded in it, can allow you to take your power back, right? By take your power back from your side, you name that this connection is over, right? I don't want to be in this connection. It's not oh, you know, wouldn't it be great if he came back, right? Or, oh, maybe he just got really busy, you know? You, you stop filling in the blanks as if this is a relationship that needs to go somewhere and you sober up and say, there's nothing here. This is not a relationship or a connection that I want to pursue. And you can sometimes communicate that powerfully from your side, right? Where you might say, hey, I notice I haven't heard... An in a, in, from you in a while and it's been good connecting with you but I'm looking for something that has a consistent connection and so I'm, I'm letting this go and I'm wishing you well right doesn't have to be perfect how you communicate don't have to say it in the way that I'm saying it but just just something that says hey from my side I'm making a declaration and here's the really key thing once you've made that declaration you stand by that declaration Right? So this isn't, as you know, some people, some men will experience this as an opportunity to maybe try and win you back or try and re-engage in the connection. Right? There may be some kind of unconsciousness in him that kind of drives him to do that, right? just sort of basic conquest kind of behavior. Or even if he knows that this isn't going to go somewhere, or even if he's never even acknowledged that to himself, most men, most people like connection. And you've probably had some kind of connection together. And sometimes people don't want the finality of that, right? They like that it's like, hey, maybe I could hit you up sometime. So you taking the power back is making clear to yourself and to the other person what your authentic truth and desire is, right? For some of you, you may actually be fine if someone just hits you up in the future and you can say, you know, yay or nay at the time as to whether you'd want to connect. But for a lot of you, if this is a, is a pain point or this has been a, a, a kind of a wounding or this has happened repeatedly, I would encourage you to err on this side of, of really claiming your power claiming what's true for you and making that communication and backing it up with your actions, right? Which means maybe you block the person, maybe you delete their number. If somehow they are in touch with you through social media or text or whatever medium, you're not, you're not, in, you're not in a conversation. This isn't a conversation. This is you ending things and you then moving on, right? And it's easier to do that if you don't start to get into the gray area of, oh, well, you know, give them the benefit of the doubt or... Maybe it'll be different this time, right? Rarely, rarely, rarely is that the case. And for that to be the case, you would have to see something was very substantively different in what they were bringing to you, right? Which isn't just a random, hey, babe, how you doing communication out of the blue. It's probably writing you a letter and saying in a heartfelt way, 
I'm so sorry what I did. I see what I did. Um, I was a fool or I wasn't on my game. And something has really changed in me that has me think we should be open to pursuing something here, right? And 99 times out of 100, that isn't a letter that the guy would actually write truthfully because that's not actually his experience. Now, sometimes people say, well, I need to know what went down. Like, in, Jack, you're asking me to like have closure and move on. How can I have closure and move on if I don't actually know what went on over there, right? That's sort of like, yeah, people who, it's like, it's tragic. They have like a missing person and they, they kind of want to know like what actually happened. Even if it's horrific, I want to know so that we can know and then we can start to move on. It's really hard to move on when things are just an open loop. And the difference between a missing person's case and what's going on here is you actually do know you may not know all the nuances, but you do know he's not your guy. He's not been in touch. He's been ghosting you. Now, do you really want to know the truth of that, right? Could it be that this is a guy that lacks courage? Could it be that his cowardice is coming up? Could it be that he's gotten back with his ex-girlfriend? Could it be that he's actually just a player and, and you're one in many of a field that he's been playing? Do you really want to know that? Like, does that really help you? So it's also just kind of like getting a bit sober. Do I actually need to know that? And by the way, often that level of truth is not forthcoming. And sometimes he couldn't even tell you truthfully what did change, you know? Maybe there's someone else came into his life and it's as clear as that, but you know, maybe he's just at a time of his life where he's kind of being a bit wishy-washy and is connecting and that's all it is. It wasn't serious to him and it would be better maybe if he could communicate that he was downshifting, right? But maybe he's not really capable of that, you know? so. I'm just asking you to be sober. You might be going after something that actually isn't available, that even if it were available, is he 100% truthful and accurate? Like maybe his unconscious sabotaged the relationship. Can he communicate that to you? So it's kind of like some nuance and complexity that he may not even be in touch with. And when you take your power back, you're saying, I'm ending this. I don't need to know what's going on over there. I've seen the reality and I'm naming it to myself and now I'm naming it into the space. And if it doesn't feel appropriate to write that out, you could send that to someone else like hey i'm just making this declaration that i'm not going to be in connection with this person or you could go block and delete and move on right but it's 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 removing this this sort of need to know that you know perhaps your limbic brain you know the part of you that got got attached to him really wants to know that because it's really confused it, it's almost like wow mum or dad to my little one just left and i don't have any idea what went on i feel completely abandoned and i'm here to say you may be having some of that experience and it is different because as an adult, you can be left, but you can't be abandoned in the same way, particularly with a guy that you're not actually in a relationship with, right? It may have that same flavor. It may be reactivating that attachment system or that wounding, but actually you can't really be abandoned because why you're not going to abandon yourself and you are whole and complete and fully functioning as an adult and you can take care of yourself and your little one may be struggling, but your adult is also here and present and can say, wow, this is tough for me. I'm having to soothe my little one as also I take the power back and realize, thank you for revealing your hand. This wasn't actually going anywhere. And even though I don't like the way that you did it, you've confirmed your colors to me. And that confirmation of your colors, that is actually more important to me in the long run, right? Because that gives me my truth, my freedom. It lets me know how I'm going to orient. It lets me know that I'm... I'm um, I'm ready to move on. But I, I want to get that piece in there about it's so easy to have our abandonment activated. And when that happens, I know it can be excruciating. But maybe there's also part of your, your prefrontal cortex, part of your higher brain that can just remember, like, I may feel abandoned, but whether I'm actually being abandoned or can even be abandoned in this kind of context of dating, maybe that doesn't even make sense. And I'm fully here. I've got my own back. My adult is online and I'm going to step forward confidently and I'm going to close the loop myself. I'm not waiting on tender hooks for him maybe to reach out or for him maybe to explain what happened. It's like, you know, and sometimes there's a huge variance in what you or I may think deserves an explanation, right? So just even to acknowledge it's a slightly gray area. Of course, I get it. There's something um, respectful about being on the front foot with your communication. Hey, I've liked our time together. I'm actually sensing this isn't going to go anywhere. And so, you know, I want to let this connection go, but I wish you well. You know, maybe that would have been great if he was able to do that, but he's actually not. So it's inviting you to get with the program and reality of what is happening. And 
in some people's reality, if, you know, if we went on two dates, I don't actually owe you an explanation and you don't owe me an explanation, right? For some other people, that's very like, wow, you know, we had that conversation, we kind of felt connected. So that would feel really strange to me. So conversely or, or kind of counterintuitively, this is an opportunity for you to notice, is there any territory that I also could be in my own subjectification? You know, I wouldn't do this. I wouldn't drop off in this way. I wouldn't ghost in this way. I wouldn't let someone do this without saying this. And that may all be true. It just doesn't mean that it's necessarily true that every other person has to operate always by that same expectation, right? It's allowing a little bit of a, of a appreciation of our differences. And again, I'm not trying to exonerate bad behavior for men. That's not the purpose of this. It's, uh, my purpose is to help you. My purpose is to get you free of a connection that's not working for you. My purpose is to help you take your power back. And part of that taking back the power might be like, okay, I would have welcomed a communication, but maybe in their reality that wasn't needed. Or I would have welcomed a communication, but maybe in their reality that wasn't even available to them. Or I would have welcomed a communication and I still see that you're not making that communication has clarified who you are to me. And let's be honest, if he makes that communication or not, he's still in the same bucket called not your guy, right? Whether he does it respectfully and courageously and heartfeltly, or he checks out and doesn't do it at all, he's still the same guy to you now, right? It's kind of like next, like he's not now in the options list. He's certainly not on the priority list and he's certainly not gonna be your guy, right? And by the way, when I use this expression being your guy, I'm not talking about your, you know, lifelong, one and only, I'm just saying a guy that can be in a relationship with you, right? I'm distinguishing not your guy is he's not your guy because he's ghosting. And when I'm ghosting, I'm not in a relationship with you, right? So it's, it's a pretty simple standard in some ways I'm trying to apply, but it's difficult because our attachment wounds, our programming, our expectations, our fears, our abandonment wounds, all of that gets kind of wrapped up into a particular connection with a person. And you can expend a lot of energy about how dare he, how disrespectful, or you can use that as a call to your own wakefulness, right? Stop giving him energy, stop giving him attention, right? You're caught up in something that isn't serving you. It's not the best use of your energy. Much better use of your energy might be, wow, how come I feel so abandoned here? Or how come it's so easy for me to feel disrespected, right? These are higher level development questions. This is where your maturity comes online. Being in the cycle of he's a douchebag and I'm now down on douchebags and I'm gonna broadcast to the world how much of a douchebag this guy is and he's just another guy that's ghosting and men are this and men are that. That's a lower consciousness, I think. A higher consciousness might still acknowledge, I would have really appreciated a communication and I feel disappointed and upset and I can metabolize that experience in me. And wow, I'd only met this guy once or twice. So we'd, we'd had a certain level of text communication. This has really, really, really triggered me. Maybe there's something on my side of the fence, right? We always bring it back if we can to our side of the fence because that's where the power is. The power is in your journey, your development, your essence, your healing your own wounds, not in some guy who's a cameo in your play, not in some guy who you might not even remember what his name is a year from now, right? Because you did only go on two or three dates and then maybe they weren't even that great anyway. You know, what's hard is that maybe you feel really disrespected and you can't let go of that. And I get it, that can be really hard. None of us likes feeling disrespected. I do know from my experience of coaching, some of us are more prone to feeling disrespected than others. And those of us that are easily to feel disrespected, it's normally the path of our development. We just don't know it yet. The path of our development is to be more equanimous so that it's harder for me to disrespect you that you don't take it so personally. When, when my myopia, my shortcomings as a man are not your problem. Like, do you get that? My, my not texting you back when it would have been courteous and effective or respectful to do so, that is not your problem. That is my problem. That stays on my side of the fence. Your side of the fence is, how come you're getting so disrespected from a guy who's being disrespecting, right? Leave it with him. Right? It's his own myopia, it's his own wounding, it's his own cowardice, or is it its own whatever it is. But it's not actually something that you need to take on so personally. And what I'm saying is hard, right? I'm not saying it's just you hear this from me and you're like, of course, Jack, just take this less personally. It is probably part of your work though, right? If we were doing a scheme of soul work for you and saying, hey, what are some of the things we might want to look at in the next 10 years? On that list might be learning how to take things less personally, not prematurely attaching to the wrong connection, allowing things to unfold without creating a story, not subjectifying, not imagining that everyone should behave to your standard and expectations, that we are different and that difference can sometimes be honored 
and we don't necessarily know if every one of your expectations would stand up to the light of intense scrutiny. You might not have even thought about it deeply. It just might be an expectation you have. These are going to be the things in your development, whether you're in connection with a guy or not. Now, a relationship can wake us up normally through what? Pain. That's why it's a bit crappy sometimes because it's the pain of the lost connection. It's the pain of the feeling of abandonment that, that we can get fixated into and we can keep looping in our pain and our activated wound or at some point we can say, this is really painful and I want to bring the light of my higher consciousness in and say, what is in this for me? Or why am, I, why am I getting so stuck on this guy? Or why am I creating a story that he disrespected me? He disrespected himself. It's not about me. How a guy communicates with me is not about me. It's about them, right? And just starting to make that more robust distinction between self and other and stop taking other people's stuff on stop having to fill in for other people be more directly connected to your own experience right your experience is you're feeling some disappointment your experience is you're feeling powerless boom be with that experience because it's it's actually an uh, a part of an evolution for most of us to notice at times we feel powerless and not have to push that away right be in the vulnerability of yeah i'm a, I'm a limited human being and sometimes i am a bit powerless but also, boom, two, take my power back, make clear energetically, this is done from my side. I don't need to hear more from him. He may loop back, he may not, he may have got busy with work, he may not, he may still still be seeing his ex-girlfriend, he may not, he may have a mother wound, he may not, just a whole lot of him that he can handle. That's his life. Your life is over here. Your life is stepping forward confidently as you can, even whilst maybe part of you feels hurt, dejected, disappointed. That's, that's part of life. But I'm saying we don't, we don't develop that more by getting overly fixated over there. We bring the power and attention back over here into your seat. You stand in your power, your essence, on your two feet, and you, you declare, this is not a connection that I want to continue with. It's done and if you can, this bit can be really hard if you feel disrespected. I wish you well. Because the I wish you well means I'm no longer attached to you. Right? I'm no longer sucked into, ooh, if you said this particular thing, or if you came back round, or if there was this reason but not that reason, it's all just kind of like an attachment that you don't need anymore. It's not an attachment that's serving you. So if you've watched this video thus far, I'd love you to like it. And if you haven't, I want you to hit subscribe. Be here for more videos. Come out every week. And I want to invite you to leave a comment beneath this video. What is your experience of this? What is your experience of trying to let go when you've been ghosted? Can you take back your power? What's stopping you taking back your power? I want to know about it. So leave me a comment. And thanks for being here as always. I'm Jack.